this is my astrophysics 1600 mount and it, it uh, was designed for internal cabling so this is your motor connection here to the CP4 and it goes to the back of the 1600 as you see there on the right ascension axis now it only requires that one cable from the CP4 to the rear of the RA axis because as you can see on the deck axis it's got this cable coming out okay and that's internal and we also have one here that comes out at the top end of the right ascension axis now at some point when you join these two halves together obviously something has to connect so that you have the internal cabling So what we have to do to, to accomplish that, once you join the right ascension axis and the deck axis together, is you got to pull this uh, cap off the bottom end that your uh, counterweight shaft goes on to. So with the counterweight uh, shaft adapter off, we're looking in here and you see that cable. Okay, I'm going to pull that out of there. And then that cable connects to that port right there. This is for the encoders. I don't have those, so I won't be using that. But this will then simply connect in here like that. And now you have a, you've completed the circuit by which uh, you have internal cabling. Okay, now that's a beautiful design if this thing is set up permanent. But if you're taking it in and out all the time, you know, from my backyard to the house or to a um, remote site, my fear is if you pull this deck axis off and you forget to unhook this, you're in a whole lot of trouble because that cable goes down into the RA axis and it goes on to a circuit board. So. Uh, I came, I thought of something else. So I talked to Howard and wanted to know if I could get an external cable made. And he said they actually do have external cables that they use there for testing. And um, so they made me one up. They made me a new one up. And so now what I do is to store this cable in here. You've got this cone that uh, is used to keep cables, internal cabling separated. Instead of putting this down the center like I did to pull it out and connect it to the deck axis, I put it alongside. Here's the side where my thumb is that's coming out from the board. This side goes to the connector and I just put them in between here, put it down, and I don't have to fool with it any longer. So by running that cable the way I did, it just keeps it cleaner up here. It keeps the cable down low and I don't have to worry about it when I, at the end of the uh, observing session, and I'm pulling the uh, deck axis off. This is the cable that they made up. It's the Astrophysics S1600GYCR. Here you see that cable. This will do the external cabling for the 1600. Now let's compare that to the little short cable that is only required if you're going to do the internal cabling. So here's what it looks like now with the external cabling. This is for your motors. This now goes to the motor box on the right ascension axis, as you see here, 
Obviously, we're no longer going to use it down at the base of the 1600. And then all I had to do was just disconnect this. There won't be any problem with it lying here like that. Just setting it aside. You can't go anywhere. And we come up here to the deck axis. We do the same thing. Just disconnect the one that went from the internal cabling. And connect the external cable. So I think I'm going to like it like that with the external cabling um, just from the standpoint that at the end of the night you just don't forget and yank that uh, deck axis off and uh, I'm used to this anyways my other mounts the Mach 1 that I had and the 1100 I have now I've always done external cabling I've never ran it through any of the axes so uh, this should work fine especially when, when it's portable had I if, if I, this thing was set up permanent it would be with the internal cabling hands down but uh, when you got to take this thing apart uh, for me it's the external cabling <laughs> 